Welcome dear audience students and scholars here I am Dr. Amjali in this video we will learn about the alternative perspective on population growth the SALO model dear scholar the SALO model highlights the interaction between population growth and capital accumulation in this model high population growth reduces output per worker uh, because rapid growth in population uh, increases the number of workers and this will force the capital stock to spread more thinly so in the steady state each worker is equipped with less capital the model omits some other potential effects of population growth here we consider to one emphasizing the interaction of population with natural resources the other emphasizing the interaction of population with technological progress the two famous model the one is Malthus the population model and the other one is the creamer uh, population model although the conceptualization and theoretical background of these models will be discussed in separate videos but here we are focusing uh, these model with respect to the silo growth model the Malthanius model uh, in his book uh, an essay on the principle of uh, population as it affects the future improvement of society he, he, the earlier economist Thomas Robert Malthus uh, 1766 to 1834 offered what may be history's most chilling forecast Malthus argued that an ever increasing population would continually strain society's ability to provide for itself mankind he predicted would forever live in poverty Okay, Malthus uh, begins by noting that food is necessary to the existence of men and that this passion between the sexes is necessary and will remain nearly in its present state. He concluded uh, that power of population is uh, infinitely greater uh, than the power in the earth to produce subsistence for men. According to Malthus, the only check on population growth was misery and vice. Attempts by charities and governments to elevate poverty were are counterproductive because uh, they merely allowed the poor to have more children, placing even greater sins on society's productive uh, capabilities. The Malthanius model may have described the world when Malthus lived but its prediction that mankind would remain in poverty uh, were wrong. The, uh, the world population has increased about sixfold uh, over past two centuries but average living standard were much higher. Because of economic growth, chronic hunger and malnutrition were, are less common now than they were in Malthus days. Feminists uh, occur because, uh, from uh, time to time, but uh, they are more often the result of uh, unequal income distribution or political instability than the inadequate production of food. Malthus uh, failed to foresee that growth in man, uh, mankind in January he would uh, uh, more than offset the effects of a larger population. Pesticide, fertilizer, machinized farm equipment, new crop varieties and other technological advances that Malthus never imagined have allowed each farmer to feed more greater number of people even uh, with more mouths to feed fewer farmers are necessary because each farmer is so productive today uh, uh, two percent uh, fewer than two percent of american uh, work on farm producing enough food to feed the nation and some uh, access to export as well 
Okay, in addition, although the passion between the sexes is just as strong now as it was in Malthus days, the link between the passion and the population growth that Malthus assumed has been broken by modern birth control. Many advanced nations such as those in West and European countries are now experiencing fertility below replacement rates. Over the next century, shrinking population may be more likely than a rapidly expanding ones. There is no little reason to think that an ever expanding population will overwhelm food production and doom mankind to poverty. So let's discuss about the Cremanian model uh, while Malthus saw population uh, growth as a threat to rising uh, living standard uh, and uh, enhancing poverty. Uh, economist uh, Michael uh, Kramer has suggested that world population growth is a key driver uh, of advancing economic prosperity. If there are, are more people, Kramer argues, then there are more scientists, inventors, and engineers to contribute to innovation and technological progress. As evidence for this hypothesis, Kramer begins by noting that over the broad span of human history, world growth rate uh, uh, has increased uh, together with world population. For example, world growth was um, uh, more rapid when the world population was 1 billion, uh, uh, which occurred around the year 1800, than it was uh, when the population was only 100 million around uh, 500 BC. Okay, this fact is consistent with the hypothesis that having more people induce more technological progress. Okay, Kramer's uh, second more compelling piece of evidence comes from comparing regions uh, of the world. The melting of the polar ice caps at the end of the ice age around 10,000 BC flooded the land bridges and separated the world into several distinct regions that could not communicate with one another for thousands of years. Uh, if technological progress is more rapid when there are, are more people to discover things than the more populous regions uh, should have experienced uh, more uh, rapid growth. As indeed uh, they did, uh, the most successful region of the world in uh, 1500 when Columbus re-established technological contact uh, included the old world civilization of the large uh, Eurasia uh, Africa region. The next in technological development was the Aztec uh, and Mayan civilization in the Americas, followed by uh, the hunter uh, gatherers of uh, Australia and then the primitive people of Tasmania uh, who, who lacked even fire making and most stone and bone tools. The least populous isolated region uh, was. Uh, Finlanders Iceland, a tiny island between Tasmania and Australia with few people to contribute new innovations. Finlanders Iceland had the least technological advance and in fact seemed to regress around uh, uh, 3000 BC human society on Finlanders Iceland died out completely. Okay, Kramer concludes from this evidence that a large population is a prerequisite uh, for uh, technological advances. So this is all about the alternative perspective on population growth uh, and uh, uh, the shallow growth model. So see you with another video. Ciao.